Hey y'all. How y'all doing today? I'm coming back with a motivational topic from God's point of view. And I'm not going to be taking up too much of y'all time. Maybe about 20 to 25 minutes today because this message was a little longer than the other messages that I had did. So today's topic is going to be God has graced you. So if you want to go ahead and grab a pen and paper and take notes, and if you want to grab your Bible, that'd be great because we're going to be going a lot from the Bible today. So you could do that. Or if not, you can always come back to this video because it'll be posted right here on Facebook, both of my Facebook pages and my YouTube. And um, you can always go back to the video. Okay, so today's topic is God has graced you. So let's pray. I'm going to start out with a prayer. Thanking God for allowing me to come here and speak his word. Thank you, God, for your grace and your mercy over me. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for speaking through me and making sure that this video reach whoever it is that you want it to reach, Father God, um, in time. Lord, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. So, let's just jump right into it. Um, we're going to start in Ephesians. In Ephesians 4 and 6, 6 through 7, in the Amplified Version, it says, One God, one Father of us all, who is sovereign over all, and working through all, ruler, and living in all. Okay, that word um, sovereign, I had um, said ruler. That's what that word means, ruler. Sovereign means ruler, okay? Yet, grace, God's undeserved favor was given to each one of us, not indiscriminately, but in different ways, in proportions to the measure of Christ's rich and abundant gift. So the grace of God is a gift that God has blessed us with, and it is undeserved, okay? It's nothing that we could do to deserve that gift of grace and his favor over our lives, okay? Accept his grace so that you can be what God has called you to be. God's grace is a gift. God's grace is something he called you to do because he knew that you can handle it. Okay, in 1 Peter 4 and 10, in the English Standard Version, it says, As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as God's steward, as God's varied grace. So, that grace is a gift, okay? It's a gift, and it's a talent. It's, it's, you know how God has blessed us with gifts and talents, and that gift is going to help you to serve one another. God has given us all gifts and graced us to carry them out. God gives us grace to complete the mission, a purpose for our life. Whatever works you do best, that's what you're graced to do. You're graced to do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens you. And you may have more grace in some areas than you do in others. Sometimes you know exactly what God has graced you to do. <clears throat> But you ignore it and do what you think is best. Okay? So, yes, God has graced us to do all things through Christ Jesus. Sometimes we're not operating in our grace. <clears throat> Sometimes we feel like we can't carry out what God told us to do. Which that something that he put in your heart. And sometimes... These different systems of the world that we live in, they take our confidence and they make it seem like that we can't do what God has called us to do. Because first of all, they make us go to school for it. They make us do all type of things. And it kind of, you know, discourage some people where it seems like, well, I feel like I know that I can do this, but why do I have to go to school for it? Why do I have to do this for it? You know, it's just... There's just going to be some extra things sometimes that you have to do to operate in your gift. But never give up because your, your gift is what's going to make you prosperous, okay? Because God has graced you in that area, 
okay? Remember, whatever area God has graced you in, you will find hidden treasures there. Take advantage of the grace. Do what he has called you to do, okay? In Matthew 6 and 21, in the Amplified Version, it says, For where your treasures is, there your heart, your wishes, your dreams that on which your life centers will also be. So whatever God has graced you to do, that's where your hidden treasures is going to be. Okay. So you just operating in your grace. First of all, you doing it, just doing it without even knowing it, you know, doing it without um, wanting to get paid for it. And as long as you keep operating in that grace, then treasures is going to come. You're going to start receiving money. That's why, you know, don't do things for money. I know that we need money. You know, we have to, you know, take care of ourselves and all this and that. But God has graced you to do a thing. And once you start operating in that thing, he's going to bless you with riches. Okay, so God even gives us grace when we are dead in sin. He has mercy on us and graces us to get out of any situation, any and every situation that should have killed, even situations that should have killed us. Okay, that's how amazing God's grace is. He graces us. Even when we don't deserve it. He graces us even when we decide to do that job that he hadn't even graced us to do. He graces us in all situations, all areas, areas of life. You know, because some of us should have been gone by now. Okay. But his grace and his mercy is what kept us. Okay. In Romans 5, 20 through 21, it says, Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. That word abound means might be full. Okay. So the law is the commandments. Okay. So moreover, the law answered that the offenses might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Okay. That has sin has reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. So, where sin abound, where you thought that you was um, full of sin and, and, and everything was coming at you, grace did much more abound. You have been graced for every situation. You are in you, you have been graced for every situation you are in. God knew the end before the beginning. He has blessed us with grace before we were even born. Okay. And um, 2 Timothy 1 and 9 in his English Standard Version, it says, Who saved us and called us to a holy calling? Not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Jesus Christ before the ages began. OK, so y'all know that these is not my words. I got all of this stuff from out the Bible. OK, God has graced us before we was even born. Before we was even put in our mother's womb, he said that I'm going to have this type of grace on you in this area. I'm going to have this type of grace on her in this area, him in this area. OK. And he graces us in all areas. Some areas we have more grace in than others. His grace is sufficient for us. Okay? His grace is sufficient for us. It's never failing. Trust the process and know that you are grace for whatever God, whatever good or bad that's in your life. You have been graced to get out of it. Whatever situation that you're in. And sometimes we, again, might think that it's us that's getting out of, us out of situations, but it's only God's grace. And anything that you have in life is only because of God's grace and his mercy. 
that he's had over you. In Romans 6 and 1, in the Amplified, in the Amplified Version, it says, What shall we say to all of this? Shall we continue in sin and practice sin as habit so that God's grace may increase and overflow? Certainly not. How can we, the very ones who died to sin, continue living in it any longer? Hmm. So, although God has graced us in these different areas, even when we write in sin, does that mean that we continue in sin so that the grace can just do its job and just overflow on us? It says, God forbid. Okay, because when the true grace of God come on you, you're not going to want to sin. You're not going to want to do the things that you was doing before. Once you realize what God did so that you can have grace and favor, you're not going to want to sin. And you know who, who is responsible for this grace for us? Is Jesus Christ. Okay. Yes. Grace has a name. And his name is Jesus. Okay. In Romans 6 and 14 and Amplified. It says. For sin will no longer. Be a master over you. You are not under the law. As slaves. But under unmerited grace. As recipients of God's favor and mercy. Okay. So. The law. Is going to be the commandments. And we are no longer under that law. Because now we know right from wrong. We know. That. We don't want to do those things. Because God's grace is so amazing. You know. And he. Jesus died for us a horrific death okay and once you feel that grace you're not gonna want to see it you're not gonna want to see it but we all fall short of the glory we all fall short of the glory everybody's seeing we are not perfect so that's the whole reason for the grace that's the whole reason for the grace um I said um, unmerited grace. That unmerited word means undeserved. This is not something that we deserve. Because what we've done, again, <laughs> we don't deserve to even sometimes be alive. Okay? Because God has brought us out of some situations. And I know I'm not the only one. Okay? unmerited not adequately earned or deserved okay once grace cup comes on you when you are aware of what it is you're not gonna want to sin but we all again fall short of the glory so it's always there for full and rich and sufficient for us sufficient meaning never failing okay so it's always there for us. Like I said, we he know we're going to fall short of the glory. That's why it's there. And once we know better, we do better. That's why we're not under the law no more. Because now we know better. Okay? 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will... Rather, glory in my um, infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So when you know that you can't handle a situation, you know that you're weak in that situation, just rest in his grace because his grace is sufficient. Okay? His grace is made perfect in your weakness. So therefore, we should be boasting all the more gladly of our weaknesses so that the, the, the um, grace of Christ may rest upon us. Okay. So, could you imagine operating fully in his grace? 
for the will of God in your life? Could you imagine doing what God has graced you to do in the full and the abundance and the blessings that will come upon you rather than, you know, you're trying to do what you're doing on your own, thinking that it's you doing it? Like God has graced us in areas that we are so strong in. That's the gift. Operate in that gift. Because like I said, it's going to bring you hidden treasures. Okay. So many people that's operating in their grace that is so prosperous in the world. Just look. You know, you see actors. You see singers you see people that's speaking the word of god preachers um everybody that's operating in their grace and you see how prosperous they is you have people that's dancers ballet dancers um all type of dancers you know that's operating in their grace and they are prosperous prosperous Okay, and we all know good from bad. So, if you're using your gift for something bad, you still could prosper because that's the God that we serve. But He wants you to operate in that gift, that positive gift, you know, that He graced you so that you can be even more prosperous. You're going to be even more prosperous when you're doing the will of God for your life. Okay, um, I did want to read a few more scriptures. Okay, I had a few more scriptures that explains grace a little bit more. And I want y'all to, you know, study this stuff because God has graced me to come and speak this word. And I'm, I'm tired of running from him. You know what I'm saying? And doing what I feel like I need to do. I know what he wanted me to do. I've been knew what he wanted me to do. But I just feel like, how could <laughs> somebody like me be graced in such an area? Okay? We all are not perfect. But in God's eyes, we are. And his spirit, you know, he said that in the spirit, we are made perfect. And when you operating in the spirit, you operating in your grace and you are perfect. Okay. So let me see here. A few scriptures that I wanted to go over quickly before I finish. Okay. In Acts 20 and 32 in the English Standard Version, it says, And now I command you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Okay. And 2 Corinthians 8 and 7 in the English Standard Version, it says, But as you excel in the knowledge in all earnestness and in our love for you, see that you excel in this act of grace also. I really like that scripture. I'm going to read it again. 2 Corinthians 8 and 7 in the English Standard Version, it says, But as you excel in knowledge, in all earnestness, earnestness, <laughs> and in our love for you, see that you excel in this act of grace. So whatever you do, learn about the grace of God and excel in that. In Acts 4 and 33, in the English Standard Version, it says, And with great power, the apostles were giving their testimonies to the, re to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, and great grace was upon them. Especially when you're trying to um, give testimony about God, about Jesus Christ. That's the will of God for everybody's life. He wants everybody to know about him. He wants everybody to know about him, and he's going to give you great grace in that area, okay? 1 Peter 5 and 10 says, And after you have suffered a little while, the, the God of all grace, 
who has caused you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. 2 Peter 1 and 2 in the English Standard Version says, May grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. 1 Peter 5 and 5 in the English Standard Version says, Likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders. Cloth yourself, all of you, with humility towards one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So humble yourself, therefore, before God, okay? So that the grace may come upon you. Okay. So yes, 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 yes. That was just a few scriptures that I wanted to go over. Okay. Um, and so now I'm going to close. I'm going to close with that. And I just want everybody to start operating in their they, they grace. <laughs> That gift that God has gifts you with because that's where you're going to find those hidden treasures. You know how you wake up in the morning and you go into a dead end job that you hate. God haven't, hasn't graced you in that area. You know what he graced you in. And I know it could be discouraging trying to walk in that grace because the system, you know, want us to do all of this stuff to operate in something that God has graced us in. But sometimes we just have to do what we have to do because we in this world, but we're not of this world. And sometimes you don't even have to follow. Most of the time you don't have to follow the systems of this world. I'm speaking this word that God has graced me with without going to theology school. No shade to the people that go to theology school, but I feel like I'm graced for this. He explaining these scriptures to me so that I can come here and explain to you all and I'm receiving the grace I'm receiving his grace and who's to say I may go to theology school one day so that I can learn more okay because I'm hungry for it I'm thirsty for it okay so Again, I'm going to close out. And um, uh, before I do close out, I want to do an altar call for those that don't have Jesus in their life and don't know where to start, don't know what God has gifted you with. When you know Jesus, he will lead you. He's going to send the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is going to lead you and guide you into all the truth. Okay? So, in Romans 10, 9 through 10, it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, the Lord is Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has risen him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confess. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So, repeat after me if this is something that you want. If you want Jesus in your life, if you want to start operating in your grace, so you can start finding out what is these hidden treasures that you are going to receive. Okay, repeat after me. I believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord. And God raised him from the dead. Okay, that's it. That's it. That's all you have to do. And if you said that with me, welcome to the kingdom. Okay, welcome to the kingdom of light. Okay, because guess what? People is, is um, raised from the dead all the time. People raised from the dead all the time. Some of you all have family members that they said was dead, but they was resurrected through Christ Jesus. Okay? So if you could believe that they can be raised from the dead, why not believe that Jesus could be raised from the dead? Okay? So that's 
Thank you, guys. Thank you for receiving that free gift, okay? So, um, I'm going to close out, and, and that's it. I'm going to close out with prayer. In Jude 24, verse 25, in the King James Version, it says, Now, unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now go walk in your grace, okay? Go walk in your grace. Amen. That's it. Have a blessed day. I love y'all. God love y'all. Jesus love y'all.